Hi out there, thanks for clicking on this video. I know you've got a lot of choices out there on the World Wide Web, and uh, hopefully you haven't made a horrible, horrible mistake. One, two, three, one, two, three. In this video, I'd like to share with you the work of an animator, filmmaker, and artist who means a lot to me. Uh, he's an artist who was enormously successful in the 1960s, influential in the 1970s, did some of his best work in the 1980s, and whose visibility steadily declined after his death in 1989 to the point where most of it is lost and unaccounted for today. I first encountered the work of Fred McGovGov when I was working at Ara Blechman studio, The Ink Tank, in a very long time ago, about 25 years ago. No, more than that. A long time ago. Uh, so McGovGup had animated some of the most interesting to me sections of Blackman's feature length film The Soldier's Tale, which was produced in 1983 for public television. I can talk more about that in the future. We screened McGovGup's short film The Pop Show from 1963 at an evening to entertain some big wigs from Sony Japan, which is another crazy, hilarious story for the future. We had gotten a VHS. Of the pop show along with three other films from McGovGub's son Fred Jr. Uh, I was working the front desk at the time so uh, you know I was the point of contact with him uh, made the exchange of envelopes so the pop show is completely different technically from McGovGub's work in the soldier's tale but they do share um, graphic sophistication and a very high energy and they're both somehow related in coolness, if anything in animation could ever be considered cool. I'm not going to go into those films today. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about McGovGub's paintings. So I didn't even know that uh, McGovGub had spent the last 15 or more years of his life primarily as a painter when I began uh, researching him for an article for the Asifa magazine. Um, again a million years ago he still did some commercial animation work in the last decades of his life like the soldier's tale or ids with fred allen or tv specials and advertising with perpetual motion and buzzco uh, all in new york city uh, but his personal creative output was no longer film so while researching his work i called up fred jr and i went to visit him out in his high-rise apartment on pennsylvania avenue uh, way out by the airport um it was December, it was just before Christmas, because I remember we then went down and uh, looked at some Christmas lights in uh, South Philadelphia. But anyway, uh, I was mostly expecting to get insights and anecdotes about um, his dad, um, uh, but what I actually received was so much better than that. Uh, Fred Jr.'s apartment was literally crammed, falling down, holes in the wall with rolled up canvases and paintings on stretchers from his father. Some of the canvases were cut up pieces of Virginia's garden, which was intended to hang in the lobby of the World Trade Center and was touted as the world's largest painting on canvas. I'm not sure what to make of the World Trade Center story. The Moreau tapestries hung there from 1973 till 2001. I haven't done too much research into this, but I don't know if there was any talk or discussion of rotating them out or putting other paintings in different places. As you can see, it would have brought nature into what was a very urban environment. Painting is, of course, titled in reference to Freddie's wife, Virginia, and you can see there's these lovingly, painstakingly crafted vegetation here. This work currently is in the care of a friend of McGubgubs and is apparently in good condition. I find this very exciting. Hopefully we can get it on display and public and getting the recognition that it deserves. So many stacks of the paintings in Fred Jr.'s apartment were paintings of spirits who had visited his father. Uh, Vinnie Caffarelli, who is a great source of information, uh, passed away a few years ago. Uh, he'd worked alongside Fred and Pablo Ferro and Ed Smith and Howard Beckerman, I believe, in the 1950s at uh, Lee Blair's Film Graphics. And Vinnie was Freddie's close friend for decades. 
Uh, he told me that one day, uh, while Freddie was on the beach, a spirit came up to him and said, stop making films, get rid of all of your animation equipment, and spend your life painting. So Freddie stopped making films, got rid of all of his animation equipment, and spent the rest of his life painting. Some of my favorite paintings by McGubgub are portraits of these spirit visitors. I should also say that paintings of ghosts in general are probably my favorite form of art, uh, so that's my underlying bias. Another collaborator of Freddy's, Jeff Cox, relayed how Freddy would communicate with Emanuel Swedenborg, the 18th century mystic theologian and scientist, by means of a payphone in Grand Central Station. Spirits and mystic geometry. These are big subjects in McGubb's paintings. Now I'm far, far, far from an expert on Swedenborg, but it seems as though Freddie felt a connection to this idea of a geometric underpinning to the cosmos. And you might think that sounds a little like cubism, and there is maybe a bit of that to Brock and Picasso, but uh, McGubb's application of these ideas is not really cubist in that same way. It seems less concerned with showing the subject in a new multifaceted way and more intent on revealing the hidden structures, undergirding, overlaying everything. And you can see how figures are obscured by shapes as if this mystic geometry was somehow intruding into the physical world. Sometimes we get pure abstraction. Uh, this piece belongs to my friend Ian. Uh, he sometimes owns a record store. It seemed like a record store kind of painting. I know of four portraits in the Spirit series, uh, and the one-time existence of a fifth. I expect there were more, but I have no evidence of this. Um, all these paintings are about four three feet by three feet, and they present a full figure in canvas, or the canvas is fully realized with a figure for the most part, um, generally from the torso up, gazing directly back at the spectator. Here's a photo of uh, the fifth spirit. I don't know, again, if this exists. Uh, you can see how the painting styles developed from the first portrait. In the first painting, the spirit is sort of blurring into the background, almost as if they are emerging from the abyss. And in the fifth, she's fully lit, dressed superbly with a landscape behind her. Now, I'd love to see this painting again, uh, but after Fred Jr.'s death, I don't know of any way to track these down. Our first spirit here was painted in 1979. Here she reappears on a beach with another figure. Uh, I think this first spirit might actually be Picasso's wife, Olga. This painting on the beach is entitled Olga at Antibes, and this 1983 painting here is titled Olga Picasso. We don't see her face, but we have a title. Uh, and I have no concrete evidence that all these things are connected, but it does make for an interesting constellation. Jockey Club, or Still Pond, as it's called on the back, is another fun painting. It's a take on John William Waterhouse's Hylas and the Nymphs. That painting, interestingly, was temporarily removed from exhibition from the Manchester Art Gallery in January 2018 in a decision, quote, influenced by recent movements against the objectification and exploitation of women, unquote, which makes me think that I per should perhaps reconsider having hung Jockey Club by the front door. So this is just a quick introduction to uh, McGubb-Gubb's work through his paintings um, and sharing these paintings, which I adore. Uh, McGovGov has lots of great work. Um, he did terrific illustrations, crazy um, full-page illustrations for the East Village Other. Um, his two-hour film, The Day I Met Zet, is a major piece of lost media. Um, playwright Arthur Coppett died um, just a few days before recording this, and I'm still sort of upset at myself for never reaching out to ask him about McGubb Gubb's animated introduction to his Broadway debut, Oh Dad, Poor Dad, Mom has hung you in the closet and I'm feeling so sad. These sequences are also lost to time, and they represent the first incorporation of animated film onto the Broadway stage. I think that we can keep these things alive, and we keep one another alive through telling these stories and sharing our work, 
and sharing work we like and our processes and all of the things that go behind it. Thanks for sticking with this. Let me know what you think in the comments, especially if you know the whereabouts of any of Fred McGubb's paintings. The theme music is written and performed by the amazing Ann Beal. Check our website and Patreon and everything. Like and subscribe, etc., etc. Uh, hopefully we'll be doing better quality videos in the future. I'm just kind of getting our feet wet, as it were, here in the still pond.